Welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering the theory of Python. In this lecture, we're going to cover Python variables. Python variables probably don't make a lot of sense quite yet in your programming career. Once we get into functions, they're going to make a lot more sense. So I'm just going to cover some ideas here that will lay the, ground, the found, foundation, the groundwork, so that when we get to functions, uh, they won't seem so foreign. So uh, in a Python program, remember that we need to organize the memory. And we've already talked about using literals. And there's these things called objects that I haven't introduced yet. I'll introduce that in a later lecture. But variables are one of the principal ways that we use to organize memory. Okay, and the right way to think about variables is they can change their value throughout their life cycle. The, when you think of a Python program, you have your code, right? And then it's accessing data that lives in memory somehow. Maybe it's on the hard drive, maybe it's on the internet. And so the code basically needs to look into that data, look into these little sections of the data, do little operations. And typically we're going to use variables to look into the data that we use. Okay. The variables have a name. They have a value. The value is always some object. There's a reference to an object. It doesn't store the value directly. This is important to remember. Other languages, each variable has its own value. But in Python, the value is, in fact, a reference to another object. And so multiple variables can refer to the same, exact same value, the exact same object. Okay. When we're talking about names, though, we run into a problem because sometimes the same name can be used in different parts of the program. And so we have a naming conflict. And so Python organizes things into what's called namespaces. OK. And we can also call these scopes. A scope is like how you look into a namespace to find the variable that you're looking for. So right now, the only scope that you'll understand is the global scope. And the global scope, I, you could also call this a file or a module scope. But the proper name is global scope. Okay, And this global scope exists within a file, a Python file. Um, and it, let me just kind of draw what that looks like out here. So if we have a file here, and then you reference a variable called a up here in the middle at the end, this is all going to reference the same variable within this file. Okay. How do we declare variables? So we, declaring a variable is important. If a variable is not declared, it will be a name error to try to read from it. Okay, so we declare a var variable with the assign statement. And I'm going to show you a simple version of the assign statement. The, the assign statement itself is quite complex. So what you do is you take an identifier, and you write the equal sign, and then you have some expression that's going to produce some kind of value. Okay, and the identifier can start with uh, it can be underscore, it can be A through Z, it can be capital A through Z. And then it can continues with the same, so underscore A through Z, A through Z, and you can also have numbers in it. Okay, So a couple of examples of identifiers that are appropriate. Uh, we can have A as an identifier, we can have A, B, C, A underscore B, C, the underscore can go in front. We can have numbers as long as the numbers don't start off. Okay, We're not going to talk a lot about the special uh, meaning of double underscores or underscore, what that actually does. Um, we'll cover that when we talk about modules and when we talk about classes. All right. After you've declared a variable, you can access the variable just with the identifier. Okay. So I can just say, like, you know, a is equal to 5. And then I say 2 times a. That should give me 10. Okay. And we can modify the value of a variable. Again, using the assign statement. Okay, so a equals five. Now a is equal to seven, and now two times a will give us fourteen. This a has changed. Okay. All right. And when we're done, we can delete with the del statement. So we can delete a variable by saying del, and then the identifier. After you deleted the variable, it's an error. It's a name error to try to access that variable again. Okay. Typically, we don't delete variables. There is some special cases where we do, however. There are some special variables in Python. I'm going to name them here, and you'll understand what they are later. One is called capital T-R-U-E, true. The other is called capital F-A-L-S-E, false. And the third is called N-O-N-E with capital N. Okay. 
So true has the integer value of one, false has the integer value of zero. You can go ahead and try two times, true times two, okay? And none is a, it's kind of like a data is missing field. For instance, if you had a form and you're asking for somebody's name, when you first hand in that form, the name is none because they haven't filled it in yet. Once they fill it in, then it's no longer none, it's some other value, okay? Uh, let's do an example. I'm going to actually introduce a new function. It's called input. And if you put input, and then I'm just going to say this. So double quote, question mark, space, question mark, quote. What this will do is it'll ask the user for some input and then return the input as a value. Okay. So here's a little program we can run. So we're going to say that 5, or no, let's say a is integer of that input. Okay, assuming that they put an actual integer in, that'll get stored into A. If they put some other kind of input in, it's gonna say value error. And then we can take whatever they entered, and with the next line, we can multiply that by two. Okay, I encourage you to try this and, and see what happens, and play around with it to understand how variables work. Okay, um, before we leave, I wanted to give some uh, tips and tricks, some things that are important with variables. First of all, choosing good names is really hard. This is one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my career. Uh, it's still something that, you know, I, I don't enjoy choosing good choosing names. I don't, I'm not very good at choosing good names. I just know that good names are not too long. They're not too short. What do I mean by too long? Well, they're too long when they take too long to type in, when it gets annoying. Okay, they're too short when you don't know what they are. Their name is like, like if you had PFX, right? What does that mean? That's probably too short of a name, right? Maybe you should call that prefix or something like that. Um, you don't typically include, uh, don't include type information. For instance, don't use name underscore str, right? Don't put that str in there, right? Especially because we know that the name is supposed to be a string, okay? We, um, we can use Unicode for the name, but typically I, I'd encourage you to avoid Unicode at this point. We're almost to the point where Unicode is universal, but not quite there yet. Um, and even then, if you're going to use your language's special characters, it's not going to be universally understood except by people who speak your language, right? It's still true that English is kind of the lingua franca, the French language. <laughs> English is the new French, right? So, uh, in, especially in programming, when it comes to programming, most programmers are able to read and write English, okay? And um, some caveats, warnings with variables. Uh, don't use too many. Every variable you kind of have to keep inside your head when you're reading the program. If you have too many variables, then it gets really confusing. So try to avoid that. Um, remember the semantic meaning. Don't change it. Um, for instance, if you have a variable called distance, and in one part of the program, you think of the distance in kilometers, and in another program, the part of the program, you're thinking of it in miles, that's going to cause an issue. Right? So in this case, if there's a specific unit attached to the variable, you might just want to attach that to the name. And this is different than attaching the type because this is the units of the variable. And so it'll help you remember what units the variable is. So don't change the semantic meaning of a variable throughout its life cycle. And um, the last thing is don't change the type. What do I mean by that? Don't say a equals two, and then later say a is equal to 4.1. Okay, we're changing the type from int to float. And although Python does allow this, and it, you can certainly do it if you really, really wanted to, uh, certain problems arise, especially if you're using optimization through something called Cython. Cython expects the types not to change of the variables. So I encourage you not to change the types after you've assigned it for the first time. Anyway, guys, I encourage you to try out variables, see what happens. Um, See if you can find ways to incorporate it in programs or in the calculator that you're using. Next video is going to be on Python objects, and then we're going to move into functions and sequences and all that kind of stuff. And that's really where you're going to see where variables become very important. 
Anyway, guys, take care and bye bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.